Are we recording? Got it. Perfect. Um, has this meeting been uh, publicly noted? Yes. Yay. All right. Um, and then maybe we could just kind of go through and do um, a roll call for, for us uh, Public Works members. Wonderful. I'd be happy to help with that. Um, Trustee Ersink. Here. Trustee Bachhorst. Present. Trustee Morbaldoff. Here. Yay. All right, sounds like we are all here. So we'll move along in the agenda here. And that is uh, to item number four, review North Oakland Avenue project history. And uh, Rebecca, I think that is you presenting. I think before we begin, we just wanted to do a brief overview of the meeting agenda. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll maybe give it to Mustafa, to um, our project engineer, to, to read through and kind of give everyone a flavor of what we're going to be discussing tonight. Do you want me Thank to do you. that? I can quickly do that too. I mean, it doesn't sure. work. Go ahead. Sure. Okay. So, so I think on the table for this evening, we are talking about the pavement replacement project for North Oakland, which was actually slated for, I think this year, 2022, but due to COVID and um, you know, trying to work with our business community in the bid, uh, we decided to push the project back to 2025 to give those businesses time to, um, you know, uh, time to flourish again, time to bring back business and, and, and get off their feet instead of you know, going through another project like this right after COVID. Uh, so, so with that said, you know, we've, we've, um, we've, we've contracted with Clark Dietz to um, give us a kind of a bigger picture overview, a scope of what we can do with this, this pavement replacement project. And I want to stress that this is not a, a redesign of North Oakland. It's, it's a, a pavement replacement project. Anybody that's been on North Oakland or bikes on North Oakland um, can, can attest to the craters that, that, that live on, in the, uh, the sides of the street and the middle of the street. So this is something that I am, you know, really, really excited about um, to get moving on because it's just, you know, it's, it's an eyesore for our village. Anyways, so uh, we will be going over, so we'll have Clark Dietz uh, review the project and the scope of the project. Um, and, and then, uh, and then later on, uh, in this, in the, we, we will open it up for public comment from the, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll open it up for comment through the Public Works Committee first. So if, if Trustee Baldoff, Trustee Bachhorst, and myself, if we have any questions, we will, that'll be the time we will, um, we'll ask those after the presentation, and then we'll open it up for public comment. Um, uh, there'll be, you know, if the comments from the public don't pertain to the actual scope of the work, which is pavement replacement, um, I ask that, you know, we kind of stay on track and not get too far off track. Like I said, it's not a redesign, it's pavement replacement. Um, so if you have other ideas, you know, you can share them, but you can also email us and we can, we can talk offline a little bit as well. Um, and after that, we will, uh, based on kind of where we are as, as a committee, we will decide to recommend this, this project and, and the scope of this project to a full board uh, for approval. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, uh, Rebecca, is that uh, was that was that all right, or do we, we would you like Mustafa to 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 break any of that down a little bit more into detail? No, I think that that's good. Um, I was just muting people because I sometimes when people come on they. Um, forget to mute. So I just was um, meeting some people for the presentation. Um, and I'm happy if Mustafa, if you could click to the, I think it's the third slide. He has control of the screen right now. History? Yes, history would be great. I'd be happy to go through that. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm at history. Oh, you are. And my screen, it says Village of Shorewood, Oakland Avenue improvements. Oh. Arthur, are you seeing the history section? No, I, I only see the first part of the slide, which is Village of Shorewood, Oakland okay. uh, Avenue improvements. Um, when we were doing this, we had, so, um, 
my screen, I have the agenda. Yeah, if you maybe scroll down to your third slide. Um, meeting outline. It, do you, Clark, uh, Mustafa, do you have this on a separate screen, like the presentation, the slideshow on a separate screen? Because you may need to click on that screen in order mm -hmm. to. No, I don't. Uh, this is kind of the only one I have. Do you want to move your cursor? We can see you moving your cursor mm -hmm. there. But you don't see the. There we go. There we go. We can do this. Wonderful. Thanks, Mustafa. Well, as Trustee Ersink um, was relaying to the group um, in 20, I think it started actually in 2019, the Village Board um, came forward and had a really strong discussion about the condition of Oakland Avenue, um, both north and south of Capitol Drive. Um, and so in 2020, um, the replacement, the pavement replacement moved forward from 2029 to 2022. Um, and at that time, it was the direction of the board to accomplish both the South um, Mill and overlay of South Oakland and then pavement replacement of North Avenue. And I, I guess one of the reasons why we, we use the language pavement replacement for people is that it's typically, it, pavement replacement means the area between the curbs. Um, lifting up that, um, what is the actual roadway and parking lanes, and then putting that back into place because of the condition of the pavement in those areas. Um, we followed through with that. There was an RFP issued for the design engineering services, and the contract was awarded to Clark Dietz, um, and their project engineer, um, Mustafa Amir, joins us tonight to share his recommendations with regards to the project design. Um, in 2021, as we all know, COVID still continued, <laughs> and we had a lot of serious conversations about what um, shutting down aspects of North Oakland would have on existing businesses, and the board felt that it was very important to um, put off the re pavement replacement at that time, um, given the unknown nature of COVID-19. So they deferred it until 2025, and that year was specifically chosen because we had scheduled um, very large scheduled infrastructure projects in other areas of the, of the village and every other year. Um, and that was the earliest year that we could um, slot it in. What it also did at the same time is it really provided an opportunity to get the design ready to go um, and then allow the engineer to work on a staging plan that we could provide to the business improvement district a year in advance of construction so that they could work um, on their coordination and active communication with the business community and the public um, regarding their staging plans and marketing plans to encourage people to the businesses during the time of construction. Um, uh, some of the other large projects that are going on that are filling up these other years we have the project from MMSD, which is occurring right now on Edgewood Avenue that we're gonna continue to see throughout the scope of this year. Um, we have the Wisconsin Department of Transportation that is also looking to do the reconstruction of Lake Drive. And we also have the largest infrastructure project in the village that we've ever done that um, is anticipated to be staged over two years in 2023 and 2024, which is the Southeast Area Combined Sewer Improvements. So that brings us up to date. Um, so we are on schedule. The, the desire is to have this designed and ready to go so that we can, um, the engineer can work on those detour and um, construction staging plans. And so that information can be provided to the bid district in advance um, for future planning of the pavement replacement in this area. And now I'm gonna turn it over to um, Director Butchlick for a review of the project scope. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wanted to um, out briefly outline the project scope um, and reiterate a couple of comments that had been made previously. Um, when the village board um, identified the North Oakland Avenue project in the long range financial plan, um, they specifically defined the project as a pavement replacement. Um, for any of you who may have um, re remembered the the um, 1996, I believe it was, reconstruction of Oakland Avenue. Um, that included, that was a, a full um, road reconstruction project. 
at, at that point, the village removed the roadway, um, the subgrade, removed curbs, and also removed um, all hardscape between the curb and the buildings on Oakland Avenue. Um, that is not the intent of this project. As, with, as Village Manager Ewald um, mentioned earlier, the scope of this project is specifically between the curbs. Uh, the intent is really for the bulk of those curbs to remain intact. We will remove the roadway and parking lanes and replace that pavement in concrete. Um, the project also includes water main and water service replacement throughout. Really the areas um, aside potentially from bump outs that you may see curb removal and replacement um, would be where that's necessary to replace a, a water service or a water valve. Um, <clears throat> just very briefly to, to review the scope of the Clark Dietz's defined work. Um, that includes the review and evaluation of a number of enhancements that have been recommended in recent planning documents that the village undertook. Um, that includes green infrastructure enhancements um, I, in the Green Infra Village's guidebook for green infrastructure. Um, also includes some enhancements related to pedestrian and bicycle safety from the um, Ped and Bike Master Plan. Um, and most recently, the transportation and parking analysis included some specific recommendations for Oakland Avenue. Um, those recommendations are specifically identified for Clark Dietz's review um, under the terms of their contract. So um, I think that provides everyone some context for the work that Clark Dietz um, has done to this point. I will turn it over to Mustafa uh, to review that work and his recommendations. Thank you, thank you very much. So we'll jump right in. Um, as Leanne said, the, uh, the main um, target in our um, improvements will be the, uh, the actual uh, driving uh, pavement surface. Um, the pavement suffers from failure of joints um, and uh, uh, which uh, you all know adversely affects uh, both ride quality and also uh, bicycle uh, ride quality. Um, the uh, street geometry will stay the same. In other words, uh, our project um, consists of maintaining the curb alignment as it is. Um, and um, um, to a large extent, we're not touching the curbs. Um, the street will be reconstructed as a concrete street. So, um, no sort of asphalt paving. And um, we're going to pay attention to the placement configuration of the joints um, to uh, maximize uh, safety of our uh, bicycling um, travelers um, and making sure that um, those um, uh, dangers are minimized, um, you know, falling into ruts and uh, cracks, etc. Um, as, um, as, as Leanne mentioned, the uh, uh, second uh, main focus is the replacement of the water main along Oakland. Um, the um, distribution system, uh, as you all know, is aging, and uh, we will replace the current uh, distribution water main. Um, and each service um, that goes off of the water main to our um, buildings will be replaced. Um, and um, um, the curb stops, which is the valve that uh, regulates flow into um, uh, each building um, are in the, um, in the sidewalk. Um, so here's a picture of one of them. Um, our um, impacts on the sidewalks and the curbs essentially are um, limited to uh, the location of the valves. Uh, so, and our intent is to put back the brick patterns wherever they, they exist. So uh, the, the bricks will be savaged. I know uh, we have a limited supply of some of these colors uh, at, the, at, the, at the yard, but uh, we are intending to um, reform the patterns on the sidewalks uh, if those are affected. Um, and uh, I think that uh, 
so limited sort of removal and replacement of curbs as we cross um, into the sidewalk. Um, in general, um, um, we're anticipating limited sidewalk impacts and those will be put back as, uh, as close to as, as uh, close to as they are today. Um, you know that um, Shorewood has a green infrastructure policy and a handbook that has been in place for many years now, and it, it uh, essentially directs development and village projects to seek um, to implement green infrastructure where applicable. So. Um, uh, that we we looked at that and and um, um, you know um, green infrastructure in general as as it's been used in Shorewood consists of permeable pa uh, pavers in alleys. Um, we've done these. Uh, the village has done these in several alleys. Um, uh, Bioretention pockets um, like the ones you are familiar with on Capitol Drive and Wilson. Um, there's um, Come on, Congress, I think. Um, and we've also used um, what we call green inlets. They, these are infiltration trenches um, that receive water from normal looking inlets at several streets, um, as well as Village Hall, uh, at Water School. Um, and um, so those are some of the previously used ones. In this case, um, we are. Um, uh, recommending tree pits. Um, so the project, well, like many other street uh, projects in Shorewood, um, the, uh, the the village takes advantage of the project to remove uh, dead slash dying ash trees, and uh, you you will not be surprised that there are several ash trees on Oakland, um, and. Uh, based upon um, the um, location of those removed trees um, and, and their proximity to existing um, storm drains on Oakland and inlets on Oakland, we've selected 10 locations for the installation of these tree pits. Um, these uh, are essentially stormwater infiltration slash collection slash storage. Uh, devices. Uh, there's a picture of them uh, on your screen. Um, and we are proposing to uh, implement these on Oakland. Um, there are, um, um, they will be novel. Um, I'm not familiar with any uh, other uh, Milwaukee suburbs that have used them so far. Um, they are um, I think that uh, they will suit the uh, the 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 uh, the nature the 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 feel of the area, um, and I think that um, they will uh, they will add another um, um, green infrastructure element uh, to the um, portfolio in in uh, Shorewood. As Leanne mentioned, we've uh, uh, the the request for proposals uh, a couple of years ago uh, also um, indicated that uh, the um, pavement replacement on Oakland would be used as uh, uh, the opportunity to implement um, enhancements to the pedestrian space um, that were developed uh, over several years in the 2015. The village commissioned and received the pedestrian bicycle master plan, um, and um, that uh, that plan had uh, recommendations on uh, for Oakland Avenue corridor, um, specifically the north, uh, you know, Capitol North. Um, oh, there was also a 2017 um, traffic study on Oakland Avenue. Uh, you might remember uh, that looked at uh, potential locations of uh, for stop signs um, and also the uh, painting of the bicycle lanes on Oakland. And then uh, there is the transportation and parking analysis that also looked at 
uh, traffic patterns, traffic flows, parking needs, etc. So those three documents, um, we essentially took uh, our team, sort of did a search for Oakland and um, sort of listed all the uh, instances and tried to implement as many uh, as as uh, of those recommendations as we could. Um, so. Here's a list of them that uh, we identified in those uh, three documents. Um, and, um, you know, uh, these are the ones that actually uh, will work. Uh, and we're proposing them, uh, we're recommending them to the committee um, for implementation. So uh, curb extensions, bump outs, as we call them, um, at crossings. So these are uh, actually present on the uh, uh, on the side street side of Oakland intersections that you might be familiar with. Um, they reduce the crossing distance um, and sort of create a more intimate and safe um, space for pedestrians and also constrict, sort of provide a, a, a visual constriction for the motorists. Uh, so it kind of slows people down. Um, we've looked at um, the, a reconfiguration of the curb line in front of the uh, Metro Market. Uh, there's a little turn lane uh, looking thing at the south uh, entrance of the parking lot. Um, so um, we, we, we said, well, you know, that's, 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 a, that's a possibility that it, it would work. Um, and then uh, instead of that lane, we would do a bump out and uh, sort of reconfigure that entrance. Um, we are removing the bricks where they are today uh, on Oakland. I mean, Oakland. Um, uh, and and um, painting them. So there will no more, or there will not be any brick crossings. Um, and because of these bump outs and how they interact with buses stopping and sort of departing, um, we are working with MCTS uh, to uh, relocate some stops so that uh, we're, uh, we're, we're able to pl place um, as many bump outs that, as, as we wish. Um, one of the major recommendations in previous plans was traffic signals at Kensington. Um, as you know, there's currently a, uh, a four-way stop there. And, you know, uh, both in 17 and more recently, um, last year, uh, we've done some vehicle movement counts. And um, there's um, not enough traffic to warrant an effective traffic signal at that intersection. And um, our recommendation is not to build um, uh, traffic signals there, but uh, build bump outs um, and maintain the four-way stop. So that would be essentially uh, a full list of um, the um, Oakland Avenue recommendations for um, in all of all those um, previously uh, published um, um, plans. And I think that uh, it, it, it sort of brings everything together um, and um, sort of, um, you know, leverages, uh, you know, the work of many consultants and experts and, and decision makers in the village for the last five, six, seven years. So this is sort of the um, uh, infrastructure, green infrastructure and, and um, pedestrian improvement list. Um, I've listed uh, the um, sort of uh, expected benefits, some drawbacks that uh, we, um, we foresee. Um, obviously, um, since we are recommending these, um, five, uh, five items. Uh, we do not uh, think the drawbacks are uh, so severe as to um, eliminate them as uh, uh, opportunities. We think that 
um, the bump outs and the tree wells uh, will bring um, a very sort of novel um, edge to, to Oakland. Um, and in general, um, you know, um, all of the sort of um, extras, as you, as you might call them, are all within sort of the budget range that you would um, save by not installing the traffic signals. So overall, the, it's, a, it's a balanced approach to safety, uh, both from sort of the user's standpoint, but also from a budgetary standpoint. Um, I'm sure you have uh, many questions. I also have a graphic of what it would lay out as. Uh, we can look at that um, if um, sort of the questions and your concerns um, uh, go that way. Um, with that, I think um, we can start sort of um, discussing each item. I'd be happy to sort of give you um, additional details. Oh, thank you, Mustafa. That was a really fantastic presentation and uh, really appreciate the thoughtfulness and uh, the energy that you put into that. Um, thank you. Uh, so I'd like to take this time to ask my, uh, uh, my fellow committee members, uh, Trustee Baldock or Trustee Bockhorst, if they have any questions or comments about uh, the project. I do not. Okay. And I don't hear, I, I don't think Tammy, I don't hear Tammy's. So, um, you know, maybe I will, can I direct one question to Rebecca? And I'd love for you to remind the public that's on the call uh, about the funding for this project, where that comes from and, and how that kind of lays out a little bit. Sure, I'd be happy to. So one of the reasons why we're also looking to accomplish this project by 2025 is because we will be utilizing um, funds from TID5 um, it, from the Metro Market um, Tax Increment District um, for purposes of this construction. So if this project was not going to occur within the near future, we would not have the funds um, available in order to accomplish it. Um, through that tax increment district. Once the project does occur, we will then um, fund it through there and then close um, that TID at that time. Thank you. Um, and then Mustafa, a question that I have for you is, is about the bricks, removing the bricks. And, and can you give me the pros and cons of bricks and, and uh, permeable pavers that we, that we had proposed at one point that are not being recommended now? Uh, can you give me the, the basically the pros and cons of, of that and, and why we would be removing the bricks from, from the street? Um, yes, I think uh, so. The bricks um, as, as the la as streetscape um, uh, on Oakland uh, occurred, and I want to say 2008. Uh, where the sidewalks were enhanced and the tree pits and the uh, crosswalks were installed with, with the bricks. Um, over the last 14 years, um, they have not worn well. So now the bricks that we have there currently aren't uh, permeable bricks uh, as we would have them in our, say, green alleys. The, those, the bricks on Oakland uh, sit on a bed of say two inch layer of sand um, and sort of a platform of concrete. Um, so, um, and, and over the years uh, we've done many investigations and, and found that perhaps the drainage of, from the base of those bricks wasn't the best and the continuous freeze thaw um, essentially made them um, a liability. They're a maintenance headache, and um, they're you know they're noisy and and um, they're just not um, presenting well. Um, you know, in many places um, they're they're patched with cold patch, and um, even you might appreciate on on Capitol Drive, um, there are several intersections we remove them just because of that reason. Um, 
So um, um, I think that uh, on the driving surface, they have not um, been the best. And we, we would not recommend putting bricks back as a, uh, as a feature on, um, on, uh, at the pedestrian crossings. Now, I know that in many other places, we're using these concrete bricks um, for, uh, to get water into a, a underground sort of filter media. In this case, um, we, the, the, the place to put them would have been along the parking lane. And, um, you know, we went back and forth, but I think where we ended up was that number one, the parking lane, um, the edge of the parking lane is the edge of the bike lane. And we were not at all impressed by how close those bricks could come to the bike lane. Um, and um, in general, the, um, um, the benefit you would get from the stormwater benefit you would get from, um, from the uh, permeable pavement uh, is a little diminished because this is a combined sewer area. Um, and um, ultimately we decided that um, the village's permeable pavement, green alley, green street uh, efforts could be realized better in less traveled streets um, as it happens, you know, um, as a, as a matter of course, and that um, in this particular location, they would they would not wear well long term. So that was why we uh, eventually decided not to recommend permeable pavement. Um, no, thank you. I appreciate that, Mustafa. You know, I, I'm a huge <laughs> proponent. I apologize. I've got a small puppy in the background, but I'm a. <laughs> I, sorry, I, I'm a huge proponent of green infrastructure. I'd like to see the village take opportunities or take a look at all the opportunities whenever we have a project in front of us. And I appreciate the research that everybody did on this. And, you know, at the same time, I'm also a proponent of uh, functional reform. And I'd rather this make sense uh, for the cost than just doing something to do something for, for aesthetics. So um, I appreciate, you know, I appreciate the honesty here of, of the pavers because it would have been nice. I think it would have been helpful, but at the same time, it's, it's, a, it's a high cost. And I think there's a lot of, um, you know, potential concerns with, with safe, public safety as far as biking on, on the pavers. And if, if they kind of start to get out of place and, um, you know, and, and just collecting where that water actually goes. So I, I appreciate uh, uh, what you guys have, have put into that and uh, entertaining the the concept of green infrastructure within this project. Um, at this time, this is a, these are the questions that I have. So I'd like to, to turn it over to the public. Um, we have some time for the public to, to ask questions. I, I, I ask, I'd like the public, if you do have a question um, for staff that we keep it on the scope of this project and not deviate from the scope of this project. Um, it's important that we look at this as um, pavement replacement and not a total redesign. So with that said, um, uh, I'd like to open up the floor if anybody has a question. Uh, do you have any questions uh, that were emailed to you, uh, Rebecca? I don't at this time, um, but if people do, if they want to raise their hands, I'm happy to let you know, Trustee Ersink, who's in the queue. Um, I don't see any hands raised at this time. Um, I have, uh, oh, one just good. popped up. Yep, um, so I, I see Hillary and uh, Trustee Arndorfer. So Hillary, you can unmute and uh, go ahead. Great, thank you. Um, I'm sorry to jump in you guys and, and ask this, um, but I'm actually gonna turn it over to my husband if that's okay, because he does have a question. Nope, sorry, he's not allowed. It says Hillary, <laughs> Todd is not allowed, I mean, okay. I, I was just wondering, you know, the, um, the bump outs and um, a lot of the different stuff would will slow traffic down on Oakland, which, um, I think it's fine. I was just wondering about how, what we took into consideration or you took into consideration that that's going to push traffic down to like Murray and Morris and add more cars and people going fast there. Is there any 
anything that you're looking at to, to slow that traffic down as well so that you don't have people speeding down that, those kind of side streets, if you will. Um, the short answer is no. I, I think that um, the, um, um, so I, there is a difference between slowing, sort of having people pay more attention to what they're doing um, and sort of chasing them away to a different street. I think that, um, you know, uh, I, you know I've, I've lived in Shorewood myself and, and I'm pretty familiar with why people drive on Oakland. People drive on Oakland because, um, well, you know, it's a corridor, but mostly to sort of use sort of the shops, the stores, the restaurants, the bars, et cetera, um, to go to, 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 um, 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 so I, 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 I'm not certain as to, you know, the bump outs, um, are going to create gridlock. So it isn't like, you know, the place is going to be unmovable. Um, what I meant by slowing down is, is that, you know, I mean, it's a natural, you know, when people are crossing the street or, um, and you might experience this yourself, as you come to say Metro Market parking lot entrance, like just the visuals of the complications, right? You know, you kind of slow down anyway. And that's what I mean. So um, to have a person cross a street sort of a block ahead is sort of a um, sort of a signal to the motorist that, you know, you should put the phone down. Um, that's sort of um, the, the idea that we're looking for. And that's usually what happens anyway. I mean, you know, um, to have um, those intersections be more sort of open to have a um, and, and you, you're coming to, a, uh, to an intersection, the bump out means that the pedestrian, the individual who's trying to cross the street, right, is fully visible to you. Uh, imagine that if the bump out is behind the last part car, right, that person has no visual relationship to you. So essentially, that's the feeling that you're trying to create with these bump outs, not gridlock. Um, and, you know, people, people who want to go to, you know, Whitefish Bay or Hampton right this minute aren't on Oakland, right? And they're not even on Murray. I mean, they're probably flying up on Wilson. And, okay. Thank you. you know, so even, uh, but, you know, Wilson is a good example, actually, you know, I mean, the way it used to be to today, just that line to your right even i mean you might have about the same space but it just looks more busy like just because you have the median and you know have the bump outs and, and you know i mean people slow down i think people are taking esterbrook you know i, I notice a lot faster traffic going through esterbrook than i do on wilson I think, uh, <laughs> that's, right. that's why those summer bump uh, the speed bumps yeah. Yep. So, and I think, you know, I don't think these will impede traffic, uh, Todd. I think these are just a visual sort of, you know, a visual cue for people to slow down and, uh, but, but they won't actually, you know, they're, they're not actually going to physically slow traffic. You'll be able to still move at the same pace. Um, it just, it's more visual. And, um, and I think, you know, for us, I think it's that balance of making sure that we are in an extremely safe place uh, for our kids, you know, especially we have a new development going on uh, Lake Bluff and, um, and, and Oakland. And I think it was important to try to get bump outs there. So we really put an emphasis on safety, uh, for the kids that may be crossing that street to get to, to Lake Bluff. So, um, yeah. you know, that, that was a big motivator, I think of ours is with the bump outs or, or the consultants. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I like the changes on Oakland. I, I just worry about the effects on how it's going to do the other kind of cross streets through the village, but and I Thank live you. on Morris, so if there's an update, you, you, you know, you'll you'll be we'll be doing something about that. Just kidding. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, Trustee Arndorfer, you're next.
Trustee Arndorf, are you there? Uh, yeah. Um, had a couple more steps to unmute than I was used to. Um, this is, I think this is for um, Leanne, and I think I know the answer to this, but um, I was wondering, uh, uh, do, does the infrastructure for the streetlights in this impacted area, um, do any of the, does any of that need any improvement? Um, and if so, is that anything that can be addressed um, while we're doing this, or if we're going curb to curb, is that not, uh, not an option in this uh, particular project? Thank you. Sure. Um, thanks for the question. Actually, I believe when Oakland Avenue was last, um, when there was last major work on Oakland Avenue, the lighting or the wiring for the lighting was replaced in conduit when the new poles were installed. Yep. So um, we do have that going for us. Um, the larger issue that that we as a group and the board has obviously talked with. Um, is the upgrade of the lighting system um, as a whole. And that really has to be done on a circuit by circuit basis. Um, I'm not intimately familiar with the circuit plans for Oakland, but I don't believe Oakland in and of itself is a singular circuit. So that we really kind of tread the water into that, that larger lighting project upgrade. So I don't think that that becomes a critical issue for the pavement replacement project. Um, I think okay. that really remains something that we have to tackle in the near future. Got it. Thank you. Point. Sure. All right. Do we have anybody else from the public that has uh, feedback or, or comments uh, about this uh, presentation? Uh, Trustee Sokerbrand. Thank you. Um, so I'm a little confused. I count eight intersections north of Capitol on Oakland Avenue. And so I'm wondering where would we put the bump outs? Would there be, you know, like, so if you have one intersection, do you have two on the north side, two on the south side for a total of four at the intersection? You know what I'm saying? Oh, we counted them as uh, pairs. So if you put, uh, 10 crossings is literally 10 crossings, so 10 pairs. Okay, so um, so how many intersections would get, so would you have one like at the corner of, well, so, some of them are three ways, you know, it's not a four way. So exactly where would the bump outs be? Okay, well. Uh, the best way to do that is for me to show you it. Let's see. I'm gonna so it. 10 bump outs is 20 total, right? Well, 20 individuals, right? So here. So. So we can, um, this is, let me resize myself here. So, um, is this, all right, so here we go. Capital, nothing. Elmdale Court, nothing. Okay, so I'm sorry. So it's just nothing will change at that intersection. Is that what you mean? That is what I mean. When I say nothing, I mean nothing, like no bump okay. outs. It'll be the same, the same situation, maybe just different striping. Well, right. Are yeah. there bricks there right now? And those will come out and it'll be pavement painted. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Yes, exactly. So the only change is that Elmdale will be uh, bricks removed and it will be paint instead. And it'll be like the international crosswalk, the wide. Yes, right. ladder, right. So yes, exactly, okay. nailed it. So the first one from the south is you would get one bump out at Jarvis, right here. Um, we would remove 
this crosswalk. There's an existing crosswalk on the north side of Jarvis, um, and we would remove that. So there would not, we would we would discourage people from crossing the street. There are no bump out and no crosswalk. That was one of the recommendations in the um, uh, traffic analysis. Okay, so on the on the east side of that, the southeast corner of that intersection, there will be will that be sod or is it all pavement or? No, there's no no concrete. This, the bump out is concrete. It's a concrete platform. Okay. Right. And so it does not affect parking. You don't lose a parking space with a bump out. Um, not the way that we've had them here. No. Um, and then we would redo the south entrance of the metro parking lot. We would put a bump out there. And then we would redo the curb. Right now, the curb um, is along this alignment. If you see my cursor, let's do this. Um, so there would be a bump out here and the curb would be placed back and we're trying to have the bus stop move to here instead of its existing location. So there's a new crossing, no bump out. Um, so the only thing at Metro Market that you're proposing is yeah. A bump out there on the southeast corner of its Jarvis, and then a little a little bump out in front of the to the north side of the entrance there. Yeah, the that would be a pair entrance. there. That that would and, be a pair. Okay, and then that's Wood Place. So you put two bump outs there, and then you would go north, and then on Olive, you would have bump out bump out at both uh, both sides, north and south. You already have bump outs on Olive East, right here, where this truck is. So you will go north, um, two pair at Marion, and you would go north, Nothing here because we have signals here, right? Lake Bluff. Um, it would go north. We have an existing bump out, mid block. So we would keep that except stripe it, right? And then you would go north. And at Kensington, you would build bump outs to cross. Um, and South side of Glendale. So that's your 10. So I'm curious, there are no uh, speed tables or speed bumps, which I believe that parking and transportation study called the speed bumps the most effective means for slowing traffic. Um, so the um, what we thought of was that the calming effect of the bump outs would be uh, a sufficient benefit. Now, I think that um, um, if um, additional um, slowing down of traffic, um, the um, we're open to uh, speed tables. Um, however, our current recommendations don't include them. Um, the, um, I think that the speed tables are probably uh, more effective where we might have higher speeds already. I think that the, um, especially like this area, we have, um, you know, the traffic isn't flying by. I mean, the average speeds are um, especially with the new sort of stop sign configuration, um, the um, slowing down of traffic uh, is not 
one of our top concerns. Unless, um, of course, that's um, something that uh, you would uh, have us look at. So if we wanted a more robust traffic calming, I guess one of the biggest problems to me when I've almost been hit in front of Metro Market on Oakland Avenue is the distraction. And I understand the idea about removing the rapid flashing beacon on the north end of the southern um, entrance there. When, you, when you've got distracted drivers and they're speeding, I mean, they, they literally don't see the rapid flashing beacon. It has no, it just doesn't seem to matter. Okay. And you kind, of, you kind of take your life in your own hands. And I guess that's what I've heard from other residents too. And so if we want something more robust in terms of slow, I've also heard that about Kensington. Um, if we wanted them, I guess, I feel like we're, we've decided that the numbers aren't high enough to put up a stop and go light on Kensington. And I wanna know how close are the margins there? Like we're gonna take the money from a stop and go light at Kensington so we can have tree pits that cost $10,000 a piece. Um, so the, uh, the, the margins aren't close, but let me, let me put it to you this way. I think that um, if, um, um, so what we're, um, we're recommending at Kensington that we're not recommending traffic lights, right? Right, but, and the traffic study recommended we do that. So I guess I'm asking you to tell me why, why you would disregard the 2020 transportation study. Um, okay, so we counted cars and movements and we, in general, if you ask this, is it warranted? We would say no. And so what, where's the data? I guess that's what I'm saying is, do you have the data? Like, we have the data, yes. So if I can compare the data. Let me, let me, let me, let me finish. Hey, Trustee Stokebrand, we're, we're getting a little, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. I, you know, so I, I think if, we're taking, we're taking enough time with this. I mean, feel free to, to send emails, but I, I would like if there's other people to speak on in the public, we're just, we're starting to dig a little deep here. So, so um, just, just let me finish what I, what I wanted to say. The, the, um, the, there is no rule that says you can't put lights, right? If you, um, um, just so you know, the, the street light sort of the thing is uh, for the intersection is, is designed. I mean, if you say, oh, we wanna buy some traffic signals, um, you can have them, right? So I think that what I'm trying to say is that, um, there isn't enough sort of traffic movement to warrant it under accepted engineering standards, but there's no such thing as you can't put them there. You can, of course you can buy them, right? So if the community says, you know, we really like um, traffic signals because we think that um, uh, we should have them there, um, there is nothing that says you can't. Okay, so I don't want you to think that I'm trying to talk you out of it. It is my job to recommend and provide my opinion to you. And you as the owner of this intersection, you can say, oh yeah, no, I, I'm, I want, put me, some, put me some lights. In fact, you know, if you want, you can have uh, both lights and bump outs. You know what I'm saying? I think that um, I don't want to sort of uh, make so that I'm telling you what to do. I'm giving you my opinion, um, but you can say, no, no, I, I don't really care. You, I want some lights. We can put them there. That's, that's as simple as that. I mean, none of this is set in stone. In fact, you know, we're early enough uh, in the process, and that's why we did this, right? Um, where nothing is set in stone. These are stick figures. Um, as you see, they're colorful drawings. So um, this isn't a design, this is my opinion. 
Thank you, um, Mustafa. We appreciate that. And uh, this is a committee meeting and it will uh, eventually go to the full board after if we decide to recommend this to the full board, it'll go to the full board and we can have these um, deeper conversations there. I just want to be respectful of everybody's time this evening and make sure we stick to, um, you know, stick to the agenda and, and, and be conscious of the time. Um, uh, so does that mean I can't ask a follow up question? Please go ahead, but uh, but let's you know let's keep it there. Oh, if we don't want to go in the weeds here, do you want to go into the weeds at the village board meeting? I'm a little confused. Well, I think it would be more more appropriate to go in 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 front of the full board because there's three of us in this committee, and we could just decide to recommend this to the full board tonight. Okay, that's fine. And then and then then based off of if we do or don't recommend it, that's when we can have this conversation. What if we don't recommend this tonight? then it's a mute point. But if we do recommend this for this evening, then you can come to the full board and we can have this discussion in front of the full board. Okay, will, will the engineer be at the full board meeting? Because I can hold my questions until then if you prefer. I, I'm sure he would, uh, I'm sure you'd oblige. Rebecca okay. has- uh, I'll hold my questions then, thank you. I'm just kind of speaking for you, Mustafa, I'm sorry. Will you be at the full board? <clears throat> when is the full board yeah we can we can figure it out okay um trustee arndarfer do you still have your hand up from before or do you have another question sorry i thought i took it down oh, that's all right um president mckeg mccullough mckeg sorry no i'm fine mckeg's fine <clears throat> i don't have a question Okay, you just have your hand up. Yeah. You got something to say? Or no? Well, I was gonna say, I mean, I think um, I, since the engineer is here, if, if the question is for Mustafa, um, maybe it is good to ask it now and then, because um, I don't know what's, what's planned for that other night. Okay. That sounds like a great plan. So Trustee Stokebrand, please go ahead. If you have questions, let's let's try to get them out tonight then. Okay, thank you. I if I if you don't want me to do this though, I'm perfectly oh, no, I think it's great. I think I, I just want to make sure we stay on track. I can sense that it's getting it's starting to get, you know, a little bit. I don't want I just wanna I just want to make sure okay, that we're you know, I message received and I am done. Thank you very much. I'm not trying to shut you off, Trustee Stokebrand. We'd like to hear your questions. I can just hear the the your your voice is starting to get a little upset here, and I that's not it's not necessary. I mean, we're just he's trying to present make a presentation, and and you know by all means, if you have questions, please please ask them. But let's let's stay on track. Um, maybe I I should sort of direct it, uh, Trustee Strogman. Are you um right? Are you suggesting that? Uh, we uh, introduce or include speed tables at or in the vicinity of uh, Metro Market. Is that something that you would like to have us um, evaluate or uh, discuss? Would that be would that be a thing? Uh, would that be a, an appropriate sort of discussion point? Um, I mean, you brought it up. I, I, I you know. So, um, I, uh, in all honesty, I guess the the the, um, um, the the idea of speed tables on Oakland had been discussed ever since the Metro Market was built. Um, you know, I was in a room when uh, these these were um, um, so. If you if that's a direction. Uh, we can render judgment or recommendation on that. Or not. It does not look like Trustee Stoke brand is part of the meeting. So we will figure this out offline and- um, Yeah, just will, let um, me know. We will let you know, Mustafa, thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. And uh, similarly, um, just, you know, uh, we can, we can discuss um, yeah. the lights also. It's, it's not a, 
So yeah, definitely. You know, like I said, this is a committee meeting to accept the presentation, for us committee members to decide whether this moves forward or not. And there'll be plenty of opportunities for, for more feedback, um, you know, from, from trustees once it gets to, to that point. So, um, yeah. you know, and, and trustee Stokerbrand can feel free to email myself, um, the, the village manager, any of us to, to further this conversation. So, um, is there any uh, more questions from the public? Um, we have Todd and Hillary, or just Hillary this time. No, I'm sorry, this time it's just me. Um, and I'll just I'll just say quickly that if the <laughs> sorry you guys, if the plan changes to um, put traffic lights at Kensington. I just hope that there is a, a further conversation about that domino effect um, down Kensington, um, because I am I wasn't interested to hear that there wasn't enough traffic. Um, I'm not an engineer. Anecdotally, I would say there's a lot of traffic on Kensington, but um, I just hope that that is a broader conversation than just to say we should put traffic lights there, because I do think that impacts, um, you know differently how people travel down that street. So I'm sorry, that just based on the, how the conversation was going, I just wanted to register that comment and request. I oh, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Hillary. Um, Charles Hagner, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Yes, thanks. Hey, I'm just curious about the uh, the trees that are slated for removal on Oakland Avenue. Are they, are they all ash trees or are there others that would have to be felled or removed? Leanne? Um, sure. As of now, um, they are they are ash trees. The village board in 2016, I believe, 2014, um, approved an ash replacement program whereby um, anytime we have a major infrastructure project that um, we remove and replace ash trees um, as a part of that project. So we would be looking to do the same here. And as you'll see, you know, on, on at, at least this cross section of that blow up. Um, the trees that are indicated for removal are ash trees. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you for the question, Charles. You're welcome. Good question, thank you. Anybody else from the public have uh, questions? All right, if there are no more questions, I'd like to come back to the committee here and, and see if we have a motion to, um, Recommend this as a possible as a um, as uh, recommend this to the full board. Um, I would make that motion. Okay. Um, I guess I don't know. I don't think there was anything in the packet that had motion language, unless I was missing it. So I guess if it suffices to say, I move to move this forward for consideration by the full village board. Does that suffice? I second that. Sounds like we yes, have that would work good. Mm -hmm. Motion in a second. Yep, that's all. That's great. Thank you, Trustee Baldoff. Um, would you like to um, do a uh, roll call? Sure. Um, Trustee Bachhorst. Yes. Trustee Moore Baldoff. Yes. Trustee Ersink. Yes. Motion carries three zero. Um, Mustafa, I just have a question because this was, there was some direction provided by the Public Works Standing Committee this evening. Um, this would then go to the full board and their next meeting is on May 21st um, at 7.30 PM. Uh, pardon me, March 21st. <laughs> I think I'm, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm only May. thinking of spring. This, this is the third time that I've done this um, by interchanging March and May. My apologies. Um, March 21st, um, which would be next week, Monday. So I just wanted to clarify with you. Um, um, no, I'm in trouble okay. that day. Okay, then then let's reconnect so that we can get it scheduled to um, ensure availability. Yes, April, first meeting in April. I mean, is uh, we can make that happen. Um, okay, I'll take a look at the calendar and then we can connect. And I would guess, um, yes, and please provide some direction as to, um, you know, what 
you'd like me to sort of add to this presentation in the light of say um, comments, uh, we'd be happy to sort of tweak and or add um, or provide enough um, for for to address those concerns. So just sure. Thank you. And I, um, Trustee Ersink, I believe that President McCaig has her hand yep. raised. I see that. Um, President McCaig. Sure. Thank you. I was just going to suggest that um, perhaps uh, Rebecca could reach out to Trustee Stokebrand and get the questions um, that she had for Mustafa so that those can be prepared and included in our packet just in case there's an amendment that's proposed when it comes to the full board. And secondly, if there is an amendment to Hillary's point that um, we would then probably defer the matter and, and have some public input. That would be my suggestion, so. I'd be happy to follow up with Trustee Stokebrand, um, definitely. Fantastic. Well, thank you for that, Rebecca. Thank you, Mustafa, for, for the presentation and all the work you put into this project. I'm really excited to, to get moving on this. I know it's several years away, but um, you know, these types of projects are, are you know, and just love to see them get done here in the village. And, and, and it's long overdue that that street is just, uh, just a mess. So, so I think um, you know, for, for the residents, for the safety, for the bikers and, and for um, the environment, I think it's just a, it's a great plan and uh, I appreciate uh, the work you've put into it as well as the Leanne and the team at DPW. So thank you everybody. Um, this has been a really great meeting. Um, and uh, the, the last item on our agenda is adjournment. So moved. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Oh. All right, fantastic. Thank you Thank so you much, everyone. everybody. Really appreciate it. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.